Now I'm going to invite our last panel up, which is uh, Dylan Goles and Thomas Lowenhop. And let's go right ahead and get started. Welcome. Thanks, guys. Um, my name is Dylan Geltz, and I work with a startup out of Brooklyn called Rotify. Um, and using open data, we've been able to improve public transportation and minimize traffic in Park Slope, Brooklyn. We're expanding quickly. Um, <laughs> it's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing process. So Brooklynites are currently using Rotify to access and update bus schedules through text messages, um, as well as share information about open parking spots uh, to get cars off the road faster. Um, and our bus platform uh, is u uses the MTA's recently released information, um, which is a good case study, uh, and is simply based on riders reporting a bus's location so that other riders waiting down the line can get a better idea of when it will, will arrive at their stop. Um, as I said, we've aggregated that real-time user, user update side of it with the MTA schedule to create a more flexible, more dynamic bus schedule uh, that makes riders both better informed and more participatory in their commute. Um, that's why we say we're bringing community to commuting, as my bright neon shirt says. Um, at a time when pains over cuts and reductions are running high, uh, the accessibility of the MTA's data has allowed Rotify to help alleviate some, some of that, that strife. Um, and by releasing data to developers and entrepreneurs like ourselves, governing bodies are not only helping, helping their constituencies, but themselves as well. Um, promoting access to innovative and, and popular technologies allows governments to run more efficiently and offer solutions that otherwise wouldn't exist. Um, I'll close it just by saying inherent to the democratization of information um, is the idea of participation and governments benefit when people participate so give us the capabilities to do that and we'll, we'll put it to work for you thank you great thank you very much right. Mr. Uh, good afternoon I'm Tom Lowenhaupt founding director of Connecting.NYC Inc a New York, City, New York State not-for-profit advocating for the development of the .NYC top-level domain as a public interest resource my presentation is on the DNS query log a soon-to-arrive database by way of background within the next few years the internet's going to change in a fundamental way it is going to become more intuitive this will happen as the ICANN, the entity that issues new top-level domains such as .com, .org, and .gov, finalizes an application process. There will initially be hundreds and then thousands of new top-level domains with names such as .bank, .sport, .news. So the future holds Chase and Citibank moving from Chase.com and Citibank.com to Chase.bank and City.bank. ESPN will move from ESPN.sports and the Wall Street to ESPN.sports, and the Wall Street <coughs> Journal will find advantage in moving to WSJ.news. With this transition, people will come to see that the Internet is far more intuitive than today and will begin entering their domain name request directly. So, for example, if you're looking for a bank, you are likely to enter index.bank, a directory bank. Or if you're looking for the news source, news sources, you might go to categories.news. And information about baseball might best be found from baseball.sports. It's going to be a different Internet, one where our dependence on search engines will be diminished. In addition to the aforementioned Sport News Bank, there will be city TLDs such as .paris, .berlin, and my favorite .myc. Imagine the .myc top-level domain is fully functional in five years, and people have come to recognize the benefit of entering domain names directly rather than relying on Google. So people learn that it's faster and more direct to enter mayor.myc, citycouncil.myc, firedepartment.myc, and police.myc. The operator of the .myc TLD will connect each of these queries to the appropriate website and create an entry in a query log database. This query log will contain valuable information from a marketing governance and civic life perspective. Let me give an example. Imagine in 1985 we had an intuitive Internet as I've described it today, baseball.sports, police.myc. And imagine the residents of Greenpoint, Brooklyn, started in entering in inquiries uh, such as holeintree.myc, spottedbeetles.myc, dying trees in Greenpoint.myc. What happens to these queries? If they are for an existing website, they will go directly to the site, and I'll skip for a moment the privacy issues associated with that database. And imagine it's time, like 1985, when the American long, Asian Longhorn Beetle has just arrived on our shores and residents in Greenport are entering intuitive inquiries so you can give information about the strange developments going on with their trees. Now let's assume that none of these initiatives 
have existing websites. What happens to these erroneous queries? We advocate that this information go into an error query log database and be made available for all in to inspect. Some, some clever researcher, you have the rest of it there, but I, I think... Yeah, but just so, if you could just sum it up really quick, we'd appreciate it. All right. So um, uh, the question is, this is a, 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 this database, this error query log database, would be to, a, a, a Twitter-esque database that the city would own and we could use to find out what's going on. With, we could feel the pulse of the city by finding out what people are entering into .myc. Thank you very much. Um, let, let me just, uh, let me pose one question uh, to, um, to Rotify. Um, first of all, we, we appreciate your creativity and how you've managed to keep things moving in, uh, uh, in Park Slope. Help us understand what this bill would mean for you all if passed. Yeah, so um, first off, I forgot to mention that uh, we were in the Big Apps competition, and that was, that was a fun experience for us. Um, but the more data that we have um, in terms of, for us, transportation is, is key. Um, the, the better we can service our public. Um, we have big plans um, with including, say, it, the alt alternate side parking data um, that can part partly be found in the in the data mine currently through the RSS feed and such. Um, you know, we we have big plans of including that uh, into our system so that we can we can tell the 2,000 people in Park Slope that participate in Rotify. Um, you know, better inform them so that the san sanitation people can run more efficiently um, and street sweeping and stuff like that. Uh, all right, now let me just be devil's advocate because I can also go online and this is um, figure out when the alternative side of the street parking. But I assume you want to layer it. That would be what you would do with that. In other words, if you had not just the information about alternative side of the street parking, but you had information about um, other... Uh, opportunities, in other words, when if the bus changes, you know all these other things. How, how can you be more specific, even than what the chair asked about how this information, if it was available with all databases, you could actually use, and in what format? Absolutely, but very specific. Absolutely. So, I'll be as specific as can be. I, I work in the space. Um, I went and waited on an F train for two and a half hours on Saturday all because I didn't go to the MTA website. And it's got to be more accessible. Um, that's what we're doing. It. We're, we're started with text messages because they're the most ubiquitous, most common. Um, we're, we're layering on not only information, but, but iPhone applications, uh, better web accessibility. But it's, it's, it's got to be more transparent, and we're, we're working to aggregate all these different places of information um, into a more easy-to-use and accessible manner. Thank you both very much uh, for your testimony. Um, and that is the last panel of the day. So I will uh, conclude uh, with a quick thought and give Councilmember Brewer an opportunity uh, just by saying um, that we agree with uh, Mr. Stanton. Data is beautiful. And uh, this is a, an opportunity for us to truly expand uh, the way that to both constituencies out there, community groups, as well as web entrepreneurs uh, can harness what is um, uh, existing today and put it to a much better use. So uh, we look forward to making sure that we get this bill passed and passed quickly. And I give you Council Member Brewer for some final words. Thank you very much. I think that um, New York would be a very exciting place to do this, um, partly because we have data that is more uh, diverse, and I think we are a well-managed city, and it would show the aspect that we are well-managed and could take – we have so many entrepreneurs here. It could really – entrepreneurs, I think, who understand the importance of serving the community. So this particular data would have so many different aspects to it, and it would be very exciting. So it's great to work with the uh, chair, Gorodnik, and with the administration. But finally, I just want to reiterate one more time to thank Kunal Mahantra and thank um, Sam Wong for all the work they put uh, in putting this uh, uh, wonderful hearing together and certainly the same over the years and Lou Kleppner and Jolie McPhee and certainly Jeff Baker from the committee and all of those in the IT division who make it possible. We've had in this committee, we've had the first tweet that went uh, live and we've also had the first audio visual in another committee. We're kind of behind in the council, but we're catching up. But the data would be real and we look forward to working with you. Thank you.
Thank you, Council Member Brewer. And with that, uh, this hearing of the Committee of Technology is adjourned.